Welcome to Mr. Ace Math. This lesson is on adding integers using the number line. But before you begin this lesson, you should make sure you're comfortable with the following things. You should make sure you're comfortable with decimals, fractions, mixed numbers, basic addition, and number line basics. Now when I say decimals, fractions, and mixed numbers, I don't mean any kind of operations with those. I just mean knowing how they look. If you're able to look at a number and say, this is a decimal, this is a fraction, and this is a mixed number, that's plenty. You'll be just fine for this lesson. So make sure you know those, and let's get started. So first of all, what are integers? Integers are positive whole numbers, negative whole numbers, and zero. Here is a number line. And on the number line, we have the number zero. And the number zero has a really important job. It separates the negative numbers from the positive numbers. The negative numbers are located to the left of zero, and the positive numbers are located to the right of zero. So again, integers are positive whole numbers, negative whole numbers, and zero. That's going to be very, very important for this next slide. So here we go. Here we have two columns, a yes column and a no column, and we have some numbers. Right now, we have to say whether or not each number is or is not an integer, starting with zero. Is zero an integer? The answer is yes, so we'll put that in the yes column. How about negative 1.5? Nope, that is not an integer because it's not a whole number. It has a decimal place value in it. Therefore, it cannot be an integer. How about negative 12? That is an integer because it's negative and it's a whole number. There's no fraction or decimal place value. How about three? Absolutely. Three is an integer because it's a positive whole number. How about one sixth? No way. One sixth is not an integer. It's a fraction. It can't be an integer. How about 10 over 2? Now this one's really tricky. I want you to think hard about this one. 10 over 2. Normally we'd say, hey, well, this is a fraction. But if we reduce it, we'll get the positive whole number 5. Therefore, it is an integer. How about negative 2 thirds? No way. It's a fraction, so it cannot be an integer. How about 9.01, which is properly read as 9 and 1 hundredth? Absolutely not. It has a decimal place value in it. Therefore, it's not an integer. How about negative 10? Absolutely. It has a negative and it's a whole number. Therefore, it's an integer. And how about 5 eighths? Absolutely not. 5 eighths is a fraction and therefore cannot be an integer. Now let's talk about adding integers using the number line. And we're gonna talk about basic addition statements that have two numbers. And the first number tells us exactly where we're gonna start on the number line. And the second number is going to tell us how to move. But what if we have a positive and what if we have a negative? What does it all mean? Well, if we're adding a positive number, it means we're gonna to move to the right. And if we're adding a negative number, it means we're gonna to move to the left. So let's take a look at the following example. Negative one plus five. What's our first number here? Well, that's negative one. Therefore, that's gonna be where we start on the number line. And what's our second number here? Well, that's five. And since it's our second number, that tells us how to move. Well, is this five positive or negative? It's a positive value which means we're going to move to the right. So here we have a number line and the last example we were looking at. Again, this five is a positive, which means we're gonna to move to the right. Now there are two methods that I use for adding integers on a number line. The first method, method one, is called the hop. I like the hop. I like the hop because it's really quick, it's really easy, and it tells us everything we have to know. It tells us our starting point, it tells us how we move, and it tells us our final answer, the sum. 
So let's start with the hop. The way we use the hop is we put a point at negative one, since that's our starting point. So at negative one, I'm gonna put a point. From negative one, I'm going to move five spaces to the right because it's a positive value. So I'm going to go from negative one and I'm going to hop five times. One, two, three, four, five. And I recommend taking it even a step further by numbering each of the hops. One, two, three, four, five. And since this is where I end up, my final answer is four. So I would say negative one plus five equals positive four. Now method two is called the arrow method. The reason this method is called the arrow method is because it consists entirely of arrows rather than hops. One extra step, you have to start at zero instead of starting at the first number. Honestly, I prefer method one over method two, but I really want to go over method two because it's the method that's used more often in textbooks. It's also the one that shows up more on state assessments. So I really just want to make sure that you guys are prepared for whatever you see. Our starting point is negative one, but like I said before, with method two, the arrow method, we have to start at zero and go from there to the starting point. So I'm going to put a dash on top of zero. And then I'm going to go from zero to my starting point, which is negative one, and I'll put another dash over that number. Then from here, I'm still going to go five places to the right from where I last left off. I went from zero to negative one. I'm now at negative one. So I'll put a dash on negative one, draw an arrow going five places to the right, because again, it's positive, so it's going to the right, and then I'll put another dash here. Your dash should be over your final answer. And again, we would say negative one plus five equals four. The final answer you're getting isn't changing based on the method. There are just two different ways of doing the same thing. So here's another example. And for this example, let's go back to method one, the hop. Our starting point is five, and our second number is negative seven, which tells us how to move. Now, is this positive or negative? Well, it's negative. And since it's negative, that means we're moving to the left on the number line. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to five, since that's my starting point, and I'm going to plot a point there. From there, I'm going to hop seven places to the left. And where I end up is the sum, our final answer. So let's hop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And remember, you really should take it a step further and number each of your hops, just to make sure you don't make a mistake. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And where you end up is your final answer. In this case, that's negative two. So we would say five plus negative seven equals negative two. So let's try the same example using the arrow method this time. Let's start at zero. The first thing we'll do, we'll put a dash on top of zero. From there, we're gonna go from zero to our starting point, which is five. So we'll draw an arrow going from zero all the way to five and place a dash over five. We're now at five. And now we need to move seven places to the left from here. So I'll put another dash and then I'm going to put an arrow that goes seven spaces to the left. So I'm gonna draw my arrow and make sure that it goes seven spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then I'll place a dash over that number and it should line up perfectly with the final answer, which again is negative two. The answer is not changing. The only thing that's different is the method that you're using. Here's another example, but this one's in reverse. Before we had our number sentence and we had to create the number line from the number sentence. This time we're given a number line and have to determine what the addition statement is. So what do you think this would be? Well, first of all, what method is this? Is this method one, the hop method, or method two, the arrow method? Well, it consists entirely of arrows, so it's definitely the arrow method. We're starting at zero and we're going to negative two, so what would our first number in our number sentence be? Well, our first number is negative two. Plus, well, how far do we go from negative two 
to the next number. Well, we go one, two, three places, but we're going to the left. So we're gonna say plus negative three. Again, because we're traveling to the left on the number line. Equals, well, what's our final answer? Well, we end up at negative five, therefore, that is our final answer, negative five. So altogether, this statement would read negative two plus negative three equals negative five. And here's our last example. This time we're looking at a number line with the hop method. So let's read the hop method to determine what our number sentence would be. Well, what's our starting point? That's negative six, so that'll be the first number in our number sentence. Plus, well, the second number tells us how to move. Are we moving to the right on the number line or to the left? We're moving to the right, therefore our second number is going to be positive. And how many places do we move? Let's number them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, we're going nine spaces to the right. We're hopping nine times to the right. So our second number is going to be nine. Equals whatever we land on. And we're landing on positive three. Therefore, we'll put a three here. And our final answer is negative six plus nine equals three. So here's your pause and practice. Just pause and practice. Hit the pause button and when you're done, unpause the video and followed by a 3, 2, 1 countdown, your answers will be displayed. Ready, set, go. So let's take a look at our answers. Number one, negative three plus five equals blank. Negative three is our starting point, so we'll put a point there. We're adding positive five, so we're going five spaces from there to the right. One, two, three, four, five. And we end up at positive two. Therefore, negative three plus five equals positive two. Number two, negative one plus negative five equals blank. Negative one is our starting point, so we'll put a point at negative one. Our second number is negative five, which means we're going five spaces to the left from negative one. One, two, three, four, five. We land on negative six. Therefore, our final answer is negative six. Question three, our starting point is seven. So we'll plot a point at positive seven. Our second number is negative 10. And since it's negative, we're going to the left. So from positive seven, I'll move 10 spaces to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. We land on negative three. Therefore, our final answer is negative three. Question four, three plus negative four equals blank. Since we're using the arrow method, we're starting at zero. So we're gonna put a dash on zero. We'll draw an arrow to our starting point, which is three. So let's do that. So here we have an arrow from zero to three. We'll place a dash over three. And our second number is negative four. So from here, we're going to put an arrow traveling four spaces to the left. One, two, three, four. It should land right about here. So our arrow goes here, we'll draw a dash, and it goes right over our final answer, which is negative one. Therefore, three plus negative four equals negative one. Question five, zero plus negative eight equals blank. Normally we start at zero and go to our starting point, but since our starting point is zero, we don't even need that arrow. So we're just gonna go straight from zero to negative eight. Put a dash over there, and that's where we land. So our final answer is zero plus negative eight equals negative eight. And question six, negative seven plus negative two equals blank. Since this is the arrow method, we're gonna put a dash over zero and then go from zero to negative seven. 
and we'll put a dash over there. We'll put a dash over negative 7 again, and from there, we'll travel negative 2 spaces. That means we're going to go two places to the left, because that's negative. So we'll draw an arrow from here, traveling two spaces, and we'll put a dash over this value, and it lines up right over our final answer, which is negative 9. Therefore, negative 7 plus negative 2 equals negative 9. So what did we learn from this lesson? Integers consist of positive whole numbers, negative whole numbers, and 0. To the left of 0 are all negative numbers. To the right of 0 are all positive numbers. When adding integers on a number line, the first number says where to start. When adding integers on a number line, the second number says how to move. If you're adding a negative integer, what direction will you move on the number line? To the left. If you're adding a positive integer, what direction will you move on the number line? To the right. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for using Mr. Ace Math. Don't just pass math, ace it.